morning welcome back to another weekly vlog and another week in lockdown um this week is actually like relatively busy compared to my other weeks um i just seem to have quite a lot of like appointments and various other things this week um which feels a little bit like <laughs> I don't know, it almost feels a bit overwhelming because I think I've been so used to just things being very quiet that suddenly seeing like quite a few things in the calendar just feels a bit strange. I mean, like before COVID, this week would be probably a fairly quiet week compared to like my other weeks. But I think just because it's been like this for so long, um, it feels a bit strange when you've actually got things like happening. Um, so... Let's see what's happening this week. So today um, I've got the lady that does my reflexology is coming over, not to do reflexology because I can't do that at the moment, um, but she's actually a chiropodist and she's coming over to do my feet. Um, basically I'm having trouble <laughs> cutting my nails and stuff because of my bad leg. Um, I can't like get down there properly and um, they're just becoming a bit painful. So um, she said she would come over and just sort them out for me so that'll be quite nice um and then this evening i've got a virtual council meeting tomorrow we will have noah but he'll be at preschool um i've got a meeting in the morning um with the specialist at the sleep clinic um i guess just to kind of update him on how things are going um i haven't been able to come off the medication that he wanted me to come off so I'm a little bit nervous about that and whether he won't be too happy but I just haven't felt comfortable coming off it like while it's been so difficult to get like appointments with your GP because it's a mental health medication I just didn't want to stop like start coming off it and then to find my mental health got really bad and I wasn't able to get any help so I'm hoping he'll understand that so I've got that and then I've also got a meeting, like a council meeting to discuss the Covid rock snake, which I filmed a few weeks ago in one of my weekly vlogs. Um, basically trying to work out like what we can do with it long term to preserve it. Um, the lady who originally started it came to me and, you know, said that it would be nice for it to be preserved and, you know, a lot of the community want the same. Um, so I've kind of taken it upon myself to try and um you know make some progress with it and organize some meetings so yeah that should be quite interesting um wednesday we've got noah um but again he'll be at preschool thursday we've got noah he'll be at preschool um i've got a phone appointment on thursday morning with um i think it's with a neurologist but they specialize in like headaches um my pots specialist has referred me to them um up in London um, obviously it's a fine appointment at the moment um, and yeah basically to talk about my headaches and to see if there's anything they can offer because my local neurology service haven't been like massively helpful they haven't been able to offer anything really um, so yeah I've got that on Thursday Friday I've got a council meeting in the morning and then I think the weekend is pretty quiet actually yes it's nothing at the weekend so yeah just just a few like well a few council meetings and a few like telephone doctor's appointment type things um so yeah i don't mind the telephone appointments like it means that i don't have to travel up to london like so regularly which is quite nice um although i do quite like being able to see a doctor in person i just find it easier to have a conversation with them and yeah i just i'm not i'm not a huge fan of speaking on the phone but it has got its positives you know not having to travel so far so that's good anyway i need to get downstairs because the crofty lady will be here shortly um i'm thinking i might do that and then have my lunch and then possibly try and do a little bit of editing so i'm not sure that i'm going to get much editing done tomorrow um because of my two appointments slash meetings so i would like to try and get some done today um but we'll just we'll see how things go um but yeah i'm gonna head downstairs now so that i can get ready for when she gets here good evening i have just finished my uh, virtual council meeting um i have got myself on the working group to discuss christmas lights which i thought would be quite nice something 
something nice and positive to look at. Um, obviously, you know, it's only January, but we've got to work out the new contract for our town's Christmas lights and working out what kind of lights we want. So I thought that would be quite a nice thing to do. Um, yeah, so it's been a while since I spoke to you. Um, I had my feet done this morning and they're feeling a lot better. Um, so basically she is currently allowed to do anything that is considered urgent in that basically if she doesn't do it that the person is possibly going to then need to go to the NHS to get them to get help for it um, and so mine kind of counted on that because it was either I got her to do it or I ended up going to the podiatrist at the surgery again so yeah that was good it's just it's one of those things I think I don't know whether other disabled people find this that it's difficult to maintain you know simple things like cutting your nails which is obviously quite important um but it's definitely something i've struggled with since i had my leg surgery um and so yeah i just thought it needed sorting now before i started getting infections and things like that so that's sorted um I then did a little bit of editing this afternoon. I didn't get a huge amount done, but I just wanted to try and do something. Um, just because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get done, if anything, tomorrow. So, yeah, I did that and had a bit of a sleep on the sofa and I've just had my meeting. Um, I've had a headache for most of today. Um, and it seems to be like, I, f I find this a lot that it affects like one side of my face, quite often the left side of my face. Um, it makes my eye go really like sore and watery um, which makes it quite difficult to see because I'm like constantly shutting my eye because it's too painful to keep it open um, luckily I have an appointment on Thursday I think with the headache person up in London um, although it's actually over the phone um, so I need to write some notes down of sort of things to tell them to see if there's anything that they can help with but yeah um it's just well it's made it made editing difficult because just looking at a computer screen when you've got a headache isn't much fun and also trying to do my meeting which is on the computer um isn't the easiest thing to do because i'm like sitting there trying to like close one eye <laughs> and i probably look a bit strange but there we go um and yeah that's me done for today with appointments and stuff um so i think i'm gonna get a full to sip and probably watch coronation street or something i don't know possibly might watch another episode of the serpent tonight i'll see what my dad wants to do um but apart from that i'm just taking it easy tonight trying to <laughs> get rid of this headache a bit um and then i have to get up make sure i'm up relatively early well early-ish tomorrow because i've got my appointment in the morning with the sleep specialist um i don't really feel like i need to write notes for that because there's not a lot for me to particularly write down um and i'm not really sure what's going to come from the appointment but we'll see <laughs> so yeah i will probably speak to you tomorrow because i can't imagine i'm going to do anything else massively interesting from now until i go to bed <laughs> good morning so my morning hasn't gone quite to plan so far. Um, I was meant to have a phone call with my sleep specialist up in London at half past 10. So I kind of ate my breakfast and everything and then I sat around for a while waiting because I didn't want to be, you know, like walking around or trying to do stuff, you know, brushing my teeth or what have you. Um, and then the phone rang because I would then struggle to sit down to actually have the conversation. So yeah, I sat around waiting for the phone to ring and I waited and I waited and I'm still waiting. Um, they haven't rung and I'm not really sure why. I'm guessing perhaps there's been some sort of mix up. I mean, I got a text saying that um, they would ring me on my mobile number and that I should kind of make sure that I'm around like an hour before my appointment time and an hour after just to give them some like flexibility um i mean that's way gone past now um so i don't know whether they were expecting me to do something else or to be at the hospital although the the text that i got did say do not come to the hospital you will get a phone call so yeah i don't know 
it's a bit frustrating because I'd got myself all kind of <laughs> worked up about it. I get I get anxious about medical appointments and stuff anyway and so I got myself all anxious and then nothing, <laughs> nothing happened. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what will happen. Um, I need to find his secretary's phone number probably, give them a ring and find out what's happened. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it's just making me more anxious now because I'm worried that I've done something wrong or, um, you know, that I should have done something, I don't know, I don't know what, but I should have done something to kind of make the contact. But then I keep reading back the text message and it does say they would ring me, so I don't know. It's just one of those things, isn't it? But there we go. Um, so yeah, I've spent a lot of my time this morning just waiting for a phone call, which... It's slightly frustrating when I could have been doing other stuff, but never mind. There we go. Um, anyway, I have got another meeting shortly. Um, we're having a meeting, a few of us, like from the council, um, and also the um, rangers who look after like our common land because that's where the COVID snake is. We're having a meeting about the COVID rock snake. If you watched my video from like my weekly vlog from a few weeks ago it should be on there I can't remember which number it was but um basically we took my nephew down to see it and it's a massive snake of painted rocks that loads of people in the community have painted and like put together to make a big snake and um we're trying to work out like how we can preserve it in the long term because it's something quite special I think um you know the community community have put a lot into it and it kind of marks a time in history I suppose so yeah we're trying to well I've been trying to push forward with getting something like in the planning to be done with it we don't necessarily want to move it at the moment because people are still really you know enjoying going to see it at the moment um but we do want to have a think about like the more long-term like plan for it of doing something to preserve it so we're going to have a little meeting via zoom and just discuss that and any ideas people have got um and then we've got Noah today he's at preschool um so by the time I've had that meeting and had some lunch I'm guessing he'll probably be home from preschool so I will probably play play with him for a bit I haven't got physio today um I've got two weeks between my physio this time so I've got my physio next Tuesday which actually I'm quite glad about because <laughs> I just could do with a week off to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we are. Day hasn't gone quite to plan so far, but never mind. Um, I'm gonna go downstairs, get my laptop set up and everything, and then talk about a COVID snake. How cute is this? I've just come in the lounge and there's a little bunny sitting on the windowsill. Um, I asked my dad why it was sitting there and apparently Noah brought it this morning although apparently it's a dog and it says woof um but yeah apparently Noah brought it this morning but he wasn't allowed to take it to school so he sat it here to watch out for him when he comes home which I just thought was so sweet so I'm here with my friend Percy who's <laughs> a little bit squashed at the moment um Noah's back from free school now I've had my lunch and everything hello <laughs> hello and what are you doing Noah yeah. You're doing this, that's really helpful. Have you opened your shop? Yeah. Yeah, and what can we buy from your shop? Are you struggling to turn that, get it on? Yeah. Do you want Nanny to help you put the lid on? Try turning it the other way, darling. This way? Yeah, that's it. What? Oh, you did it, well done. <laughs> so what can we buy at your shop? So you need to turn it to the right. This way. So righty tighty. You say? Yeah, that way, but you need to put it on properly first. So that other way, other way. This way. Other way. This way. Yeah, that way. That's you, that's righty tighty. If you turn it the other way, if you turn it the other way, it's lefty loosey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I remember. Get some food. Oh, lovely. What are you selling? Uh, Have you got any pancakes? Um. No. Oh. Oh, that's disappointing. It's nearly pancake I, I, day. I, I did want some pancakes. Have you got a donut? Nobody's got some ketchup. <laughs> no, it is a strawberry. Oh, it's a strawberry, okay. Well, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> 
no, 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 yes. Are you, are you um, Excuse me, have you got a banana that I could buy, please? No, but I've got this. What's that? What is it? I'll tell you what it is. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> what food can I buy then, if you haven't got a banana or a donut or a pancake? What can I buy? <laughs> Have you got any cheese? Some sardines. Yeah, sardines. <laughs> you do like sardines. You do like sardines, Nanny. He's yeah, already told. I, I he's don't... already told Nanny that she is thirsty and she will drink her milk. I don't want sardines. I want cheese. I'm not Please. sure. I'm not sure about this shop, Nanny. It doesn't seem to have. What's that? Orange strawberries. Orange strawberries. <laughs> oh yeah, orange. Oh, That's a bit strange. Yes, Nanny. Don't think they smell too much, right? No. Nanny. Yes, darling. How, do you like corn strawberries? Do I like what? Orange strawberries. Orange strawberries. I don't think I've ever had orange strawberries. Maybe you could give some to Nanny to try. Uh, okay. Yeah. I've done to open it. Here you go, Nanny. Oh, thank you. It might be. Do you know what? It I'm might sure be strawberry I'm milkshake. I think the shopkeeper is just getting to grips with his stock at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's lemon juice. Oh, it's lemon juice. Could I have some lemon juice, please? Oh, of course, yes. How much is it? Uh, How much do I have to pay you? £24. £24 for lemon juice? Yes. You're very expensive. Let me see what I've is got. Is it good lemon juice? Let me see what I've got in my pocket. Well, apparently it's 100% oh. natural. Here you go. There's £24. It better be good. Okay. I'll put it in my pocket. Oh, it's already open. Has somebody used this before? It's half drunk. £24. <laughs> oh, I don't like that, sir. Excuse me. She wants her money back. Can I have my money back? I don't like it. Ooh. I'd like a refund, please. Oh, why? Have you got some money left? <laughs> Could I have my money back, please? I don't. I don't want it anymore. Oh, you're doing a, doing an exchange, are you? Oh dear. Oh. He's given me oh some vegetable soup. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just, what you, uh... Just what I wanted. Yeah. Please, could what I see this? Please, could I see your rabbit? Oh, that's a nice rabbit. Where did you get this from? <laughs> long, long time ago. The shop's a long time. When I was with my mum and daddy. When you were with mummy and daddy. You got it when you were with mummy and daddy. And I. And I. Yeah. And my daddy, I think, yeah. I would like a rabbit called that rabbit, a fluffy rabbit. You wanted a fluffy rabbit, and that's what you said to mummy and daddy, was it? Like, daddy, like this one, and has he got a name? Yes, rabbit. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and Noah. Earlier, what were you saying to Nanny about what you were going to have at your house? A cat. He's going to have a cat at his house, apparently. What colour was it? What colour is your cat going to be? Red. Oh. Has she, what, what's your cat going to be called? Will your cat have a name? Oh, here's my phone. Oh, who's on the phone? No one. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll just tell Okay. Maybe. Who are you going to ring? You're texting someone, are you? Who are you texting? Um, called my mummy and daddy. Oh, mummy and daddy. Cheese. Oh, cheese. Did you take a picture? Cheese. Cheese. Good. Oh, thank you. Was it a good picture? Yeah. Can I take a picture with you? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good. 
Good morning, happy Wednesday. Um, today is a Noah day. He went. He goes into preschool um, just before lunch, um, so I got a bit of time this morning just playing with him before he went in. He was so funny. Um, he like sometimes I do think he's like a little miniature teenager um, because we got to the, like the point where like just before he needed to go into school, and so we said, oh, you know, come on now, and now we need to get ready. Um, and he was like, he said, no. I'm not getting ready for school. I want to play here. Um, so then we were like, we were like, no, you can't do that. Come on, you're going to be late for school. We need to take you in. And um, and so my dad then sort of said to him, oh, um, he said, okay, let's let's have your feet then, and we'll pop your shoes on. <laughs> and he says, um, he says, oh, he says, you can't have my feet. I left my feet at home today, so you can't put my shoes on. <laughs> and it's like, what did he say to that? Um, but yeah he it's like he's saying this stuff and we're trying not to laugh because we're trying to kind of you know be not strict but like firm and you know he's, you know he's got boundaries and you know if we ask him to get ready then he needs to get ready but when he says stuff like that it's really really difficult not to laugh um it does make me wonder like how my parents disciplined us sometimes when we were probably doing stuff and saying stuff that was quite funny. Um, I just have to bite my tongue or when like, you know, when I'm looking after no or whatever. And sometimes you just want to laugh, but you know, you can't because you need to kind of keep up the <laughs> pretense of being in charge. Um, but yeah, no, made us laugh this morning. Um, he's also still convinced that he is going to have a cat at his house and it's going to be a red cat and it's going to be called Felix um, and apparently his mummy and daddy know all about it but they don't um, this is just something that he's come up with that he thinks is going to happen um, he really seems to love Lenny at the moment he was like running uh, he was like going around the table because Lenny likes to sit under the t chairs at the kitchen table um, and he went up to Lenny and he was like he goes he kind of goes up slowly um, and he says that he says oh he says Lenny um, I'm here to talk to you and then Lenny starts to walk off and he says he said don't be scared Lenny I'm here to help you it was so sweet um, but yeah he seems to have a real soft spot for Lenny which is quite sweet um, but Lenny I don't think is quite so sure so there we go anyway he's at school um, I'm getting on with doing some editing and then when he gets back I'll obviously play with him I'm having one of those days today where I feel really hungry but I don't really want to eat because I feel sick <laughs> um, you know I am I am eating like I've had my breakfast and everything but I just I have these days sometimes where I just seem to I feel really hungry but I don't really know what I fancy and then when I do eat it just makes me feel a bit rubbish and I don't know it's just a really frustrating like set of circumstances I think trying to I don't know. I don't know whether it's to do with chronic illness and just, you know, being hungry, but the gastroparesis making it difficult, or whether it's just one of those days. Um, but they really frustrate me these days. You know, when like you you feel really hungry and you know you fancy something, but you don't know what that something is. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to decide what I will have for lunch. I'm thinking maybe pasta or something. That might go down okay. Um, but yeah. I need to ca carry on with this first. Um, I did just want to say I was really sad to hear the news yesterday about Captain Tom dying. Um, we knew that like there'd been like newspaper articles out saying that he was in hospital, um, and then when I read that his family were there with him, I just kind of thought, oh, it's not going to be good because I know at the moment, you know, they're only really letting family in when somebody's kind of coming to the end of their life so that was kind of a bit of a a hint I suppose that he was kind of in that that position um but yeah it was really sad you know he I mean he's he's had an amazing life and certainly over the last year I think it has been what the country needed to keep morale up and he managed to encompassed that in in what he did and and obviously raised an amazing amount of money for nhs charities and um yeah just just an amazing man and i hope that 
as well as mourning him obviously people are going to mourn him and, and feel sad about it but hopefully they will also be able to celebrate his life and just the amazing things that he did for his country and I'm sure you know his family will have so many happy memories of him um I just found my book that I got for my birthday from I think it was from David and Emma um which is this one which is called 100 Steps um by Sir Tom Moore and illustrated illustrated by Adam Larkham um and I just thought I'd show it again because it's something that I would really recommend it's a beautiful book um i guess it's marketed for children really but i really like it um it's just all about his life really um from when he was young to you know up until very recently and it talks about um his time as a child and his time in the war just all sorts of different things really and it's a really interest it's a really interesting story to understand you know everything that he went through in his life um but it's also just got beautiful like illustrations and it would be a, i think it would be a nice book to read with a child but i don't think i, I don't think you can't i'm trying to think what i'm trying to say <laughs> i think as an adult you can enjoy it just as much um, I liked the quote here, the first step is always the hardest but unless you take that first step you will never finish which I think is a, a good quote to live by and something that I need to try and do a bit more but yeah it's just it's just really a really nice book so I did wonder actually whether I might try and read this with Noah today um, it's one of those books where I kind of I don't want to give it to him because it's a special book like of mine um but it, i would like to sit down and just read it with him and talk to him a little bit about tom moore and who he was and why he was an important man and some of the things that he did during his life so yeah i will link it below if you're interested in checking it out i think he has also written or someone has written with him like a book that's more aimed at adults i'm not sure i need to have a look into that but for me this is this is something that was nice and I just think it's one it's a nice like reminder of <laughs> I don't know that's a weird thing to say a nice reminder of this time of like in history because it's a bit of a weird time in history to want to be reminded of but I think this book kind of shows like the positive parts of what has been happening um but also it's just an interesting story about an, an interesting man so yeah my uh, my thoughts are with his family because I'm guessing you know it's going to be a really hard time for them at the moment and they're going to want to grieve privately but there's also going to be a lot of publicity and people wanting to talk to them so I just I'm thinking of them and you know them dealing with their grief and everything but yeah just wanted to acknowledge it because he was a very nice man from what I could tell obviously didn't meet him but um yeah Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now and I'm going to get on with doing some editing. I have to read it all that. Do you? So Noah's just got back from school and this is what he's made today. What is it? It's mine. What is it though, Noah? It's mine. What's it meant to be? Whoa, careful, he dropped it. What's it meant to be? Is it, is it, is it a frog? Is it a frog? He's playing with the tumbleweed. <laughs> Noah, is it a green frog? He's lost interest now. Is it a turtle? <coughs> no, it's a dinosaur. Oh, okay. No, it's a fish. Oh, it's a fish. It's a dino biscuit. It's He's got little uh, Milky Way magic hearts, which are my favourite for his mouth. And then some chocolate. Can you eat it? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was going to eat it. I thought I was going to eat it. But I was going to eat it. Oh. I'll tell you what, I'll eat it. No, I'm Captain Sir Tom Moore. And he was a hundred years old. Do you think that, is that very old? Mm, it's a lot older so than old, now. Older than now. And he did some special walking and he raised lots and lots of money for the hospitals. So we can have a look and it's all about him and what he did in his life. 
So here we go. Let's open it. Can't do this. There we go. So this is on a bright April morning, a 99-year-old man stood outside his house and held onto his walking frame. His name was Captain Tom Moore, and he had pledged to walk 100 lengths of his garden in time for his 100th birthday. I don't appear. To raise money for the doctors and nurses, risking their lives to save other people. It's like Daddy, isn't it? Daddy saves people. Is that Daddy? That's not Daddy. That's He's called Tom. Oh. Tom took a deep breath. He knew this wasn't going to be easy, but he told himself one of the many important things he'd learnt during his long life. The first step is always the hardest, but unless you take that first step, you'll never finish. That's very true, isn't it? Oh, look, Tom grew up in a small town called Cayley in York. Oh, okay, in Yorkshire. His dad built houses, so his dad was a builder. And his mum was a teacher, just like your mummy. Mm -hmm. My mummy's a teacher. She is. Mm -hmm. Even though most boys avoided the kitchen in those days, Tom loved spending hours cooking with his mum. You like cooking with your mummy, don't you? Yeah, and my mummy says I like to play. That's right. Good evening. It's a little while later since I last spoke to you. Noah has gone home. I have been having a nap on the sofa because I was absolutely shattered. Um, yeah, I'm not very much more awake than I was before he left. Um, but yeah, I had a nice play with him before he went home. We didn't do dinner tonight because um, he was having that at home. So we just had a play until Lisa picked him up. Um, and now... I am watching um, a Hollyoaks version of Come Dine With Me that I had recorded from ages ago. Um, I'm trying to make my way through some stuff that I've got recorded because um, our Virgin Box is getting rather full up of recorded... Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, our Virgin Box is getting rather full up um, of recorded stuff because I haven't been very good at watching things. Um, so I'm just trying to make my way through stuff and I wanted something that I didn't have to concentrate on too much. Um, so I'm watching the last episode of this. I've been watching it on and off for the last week or so. Um, and I'm doing something which I've been meaning to do for ages and just other things have taken priority. Um, which is going through all of our Christmas cards. Um, so I do this every year. Um, I need to write down the ones that I've received because I like to just keep a record of who sent me a Christmas card. Um, and then I also need to, well, what, what I do is look through them and decide, one, if there's any that I want to keep. Um, I don't tend to keep many Christmas cards, but like things like this, um, which is Maisie's footprint, um, I would like to keep something like that. Um, and then looking through the rest of them, I like to try and cut them up, like any ones that are suitable, I like to cut them up to use as tags for the next year, um, just as a way of recycling them. So yeah, I'm going to have a look through these, write them down, write the one, these aren't all mine, some of them are like my mum and dad's and stuff, um, I'm not that popular. <laughs> um, yeah, write down the ones that um, I've received and then work out which ones I want to cut up for tags and things like that. So I'm going to do that while I watch this Hollyoaks Come Dine With Me, which is just my, a guilty pleasure. I love Come Dine With Me and a Hollyoaks version is even better. <laughs> Always find your way to higher ground May you always keep your head held up high Pretty little thing You're a diamond in the rough Shining from within I can tell that you're tough Just the sight of you when I'm at my weakest point 
Makes a world of difference So oh, you make me strong Pretty little thing Good morning, I had another Well, I was going to say another phone call With a, a medical professional But actually it's not another one Because the one on Tuesday never happened And I still don't know why um, So yeah, I had a, a like virtual hospital appointment this morning um it was with a specialist up in london who works in like i think he works in the pain clinic but they, he specializes in headaches and my pots specialist had referred me to him after i'd spoken to him in november and mentioned that i was struggling quite a lot with headaches and stuff um didn't expect the appointment to come through so quickly actually um but it did um usually he would have seen me in person but obviously because of covid um they did it over the phone um and yeah he was really really nice um very approachable easy to talk to um asked a bit about my headache asked why my local neurology team wouldn't help um because basically they said because i'm on opiates um they basically can't do anything um i told him that and he was like well that's a bit blunt isn't it so i was like yeah um so yeah i kind of explained what my headaches are like how often they're there whereabouts they are all this kind of stuff and he thinks um that a lot of my headaches are down to um i can't remember what he called it but basically because of my eds um he said it's likely that i've got um like instability in my neck and um that can be causing my that could be causing my headaches he called it like was it cervical it might be cervical instability headaches or so, something like that um and then he said it sounds like they're kind of mixed a bit with migraines they might be related possibly something to, you know possibly not but um it was quite good actually i i was quite i quite appreciated him saying that because nobody else has ever really kind of acknowledged the fact that I've probably got instability in my neck and everything and that's what's possibly causing so many of my problems um so it was quite nice to hear somebody actually acknowledge that um so he thinks that there are things that he can do um so he said there are medications a lot of which I've already tried and didn't get on with um but also he said because I am on opiates um the medications might not have quite so much of an effect um he was really really good actually about me being on opiates because he said he said yeah in, in an ideal world then it's not ideal to be on opiates but he said you know it sounds like you need them and so you've got to take them and i was like thank you <laughs> somebody who actually gets this um so yeah he's not keen to do medication at the moment um because it can also cause side effects and he doesn't want me to get them um so he said he did talk about um he said that he thought doing some greater occipital nerve blocks would help so i said that i do actually have those at my local hospital and he wanted to know like how i found them um how often i have them and i said i'm probably getting them about once a year at the moment and they do seem to help i said they don't like make it go away they just seem to like take the edge off it a bit um and he said that for them to be like effective i should be having them every like th like three to four months so um he would like me to try i think he wants me to go in up to go up to london to have those done but also he was gonna he suggested doing some injections like in my forehead i'm not sure like what they're going to be injecting um in my forehead um but he said i think he wanted to try like a combination of the nerve block and the forehead injections first he said if i don't get much um relief from that then another option would be to look at doing botox um and that would involve like lots of little injections kind of all over my head he said if that doesn't give me much relief there was something else i can't I can't remember what he said he did he did name it but I I don't know it was a word that I didn't know and I didn't sort of have it written down or anything but hopefully he may write it in the letter from when he sends me the letter so yeah it sounds like he has got some ideas which is nice because as I said when I went to see my local neurologists they were very dismissive basically just didn't seem to want to help me um but he was he was really really nice yeah really seemed to want to help he 
um he kept asking me if i had any questions or um you know he just he just really seemed to want to help and wanted to know how i felt about it all and you know was i happy with what he was suggesting and all this kind of stuff so yeah i was really really pleased with how the appointment went um so yeah i don't think there's i'm trying to think if there was anything else that came of that appointment but i don't think there was um, oh yeah, one more thing. He said um, that he will send me a letter about it all um, and he'll send me a headache diary which he just wants me to fill in so that he can just get a little bit of a better idea of like m the pattern of my headaches, how often they are, what they're like and stuff. Um, so he's going to send me that to fill in and then I can take that when I go and get the injections apparently. So yeah, I don't quite know like... I don't know because I'm used to having the injections done at my local hospital so I know the procedure there you know I know that I get sedated and um you know what happens but I don't I don't think all hospitals sedate you for occipital nerve blocks so I, I'm a little bit nervous about getting them done somewhere else and also having to obviously travel back from London after having them done but I don't know just have to cross that bridge when we come to it and i have had them done without sedation before they are painful but you know it's a means to an end isn't it so there we go so yeah i'm glad that went well after tuesday's non-event um <laughs> and not going very well um and i don't know it just it makes a big difference speaking to a doctor who takes you seriously who doesn't dismiss you who involves you in your care um yeah when you've spent so many years having basically being medically gaslighted it, it makes a huge difference so yeah glad that's done um i'm just getting on with doing some more editing noah is at ours today but he's at preschool so i'll see him a little bit later i don't have any other plans today so as i said just getting on with editing and then once noah's home i'll play with him um i think we're doing his dinner tonight so um presumably lisa will pick him up sort of after dinner well, I'm sure she will pick him up after dinner, but I don't really know what time. Um, and yeah, that is about the plan of my day, really. So I'm going to get on with doing this. I'm determined to get this 2020 review video finished. I've got so many other things I want to film and I'm just, I'm just, I'm close to the end, but it's just taking a long time. Hopefully it'll be worth it. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I've got them to look back on. Um, but yeah, it's just taken a while. Um, anyway, I'm going to get on with this before I go and have some lunch. Good evening. Oh, I feel like all I do at the moment is apologise on here for not filming um, and just not having stuff to film. Um, I don't know, it's just, just struggling the last few weeks. Um, having one of those days today where I just feel completely pissed off with the world and angry with the world um i don't know it's just i don't know <laughs> i just i don't even know what to say i just feel frustrated with the way disabled people and chronically ill people are being treated i just i don't know some days it just really gets to me um and it's like i don't know sometimes it it feels like no one is hearing us and nothing is being done and it just makes you feel really powerless um and sometimes i just i just want to cry about it and feel angry about it and that's that's how i'm feeling today um certain things happen i think and they just act as a bit of a trigger of, you know like you can be kind of pootling along doing not too bad trying to do your bit to kind of make things a bit better and then like things can happen and I think sometimes it just tips you over the edge and makes you feel just like you've had enough of the world and you want to get off um, and that's what I'm feeling today so yeah sorry I don't know why Alfie's parking um, but yeah I did some editing this morning had my lunch Noah came home and so we played with him I've just had a nap and I am now going to go through planning applications because I've got a um, virtual town council meeting tomorrow which is the planning meeting so I need to go through the planning applications for that 
So I'm going to do that and try and distract myself with something. Um, <laughs> there's Death in Paradise on tonight, so I'm going to watch that. Alfie, what's the matter? Yeah, Death in Paradise is on tonight, so I'm going to watch that. I think it's a two-parter, so there's another one tomorrow. Um, so that's good. That makes me smile. It's one of my favourite programmes, is Death in Paradise. Um, it's just a nice... Well, I say it's a nice programme, it's about murder, but it's set in a lovely place and it's kind of it, it's like a murder mystery but it's kind of light-hearted if that makes sense um yeah i enjoy it so i'm gonna get on with going through these planning applications i'm catching up on some holly oaks at the moment and i'm just i'm just trying to distract myself tonight and get through today um and yeah, I just I just apologise at the moment for vlogs because it's just really hard to find things to film. Just nothing, nothing's happening. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. My mental health is rubbish. My physical health is rubbish, and it's just it's just hard. And part of me thinks, do I just stop filming and not bother? But then I kind of think I don't just want to film the good stuff because that's not what life is like. And I'm sure many other people are feeling like this as well. So, to be honest, it would help me if I saw other people talking about stuff like this. So, I'm hoping that maybe it will help somebody else. <laughs> Friday I have just finished a virtual council meeting um not as lively as the one that's going around social media at the moment um yeah that was an that was an interesting watch I don't know if you've seen it but if you haven't most council meetings are not <laughs> not like that at all um but yeah I've just finished the council meeting um I haven't got any other meetings or anything today so I really want to kind of work on getting as much editing done as I can, trying to get this 2020 review finished. Um, yeah, that's kind of my main aim, really. Um, the sun's out for a change. I, I can't remember the last time I saw the sun. It's just rained so much. Um, but it's really nice, actually, today. So, yeah, the sun's out. And it's another day in lockdown <laughs> um yeah so i'm just going to go through a few emails while i'm here um and then i will head up to my office to go on with this editing <laughs>
today. Um, I had a bit of one yesterday and the day before and I just tend to find that like when I get a head, like bad headache um, that they seem to last for a few days so I'm kind of struggling to do stuff today because all I want to do is close my eyes um, which I will probably go and do in a little while when I lie on the sofa. Um, but yeah I had a phone call or a video call with my friend Lydia which we haven't done for a while so that was nice. Um, and I'm just, I've been trying to do a bit of editing, but I'm just struggling to look at the computer screen. Um, so I may give up. Um, but yeah, yesterday afternoon I had a text message from my doctor's surgery to say that I can now book my COVID jab. Um, which I was quite surprised about actually. Um, one, because I thought that they were still doing group four, which is the um, extremely vulnerable group. And... I think it's like over 70 or something um, and so I kind of was a bit confused about why I'd been called because I've not been put in that group um, but actually like after speaking to some people I found out that actually they have pretty much done that group now so they're moving on to the next groups um, but I was also a bit surprised because <clears throat> excuse me um, yeah I was also a bit surprised because I think I was just really convinced that I was going to have to fight for it um, because my a lot of my conditions are unusual conditions I suppose um, they're not kind of like particularly well known so they're not um, they're not covered on the um, when you look at the there's like a breakdown of the different groups and who's going to be in what my conditions aren't generally on there so um, I thought I would have to kind of contact my GP to put me in manually and stuff um, the only one that I did think might um, put me in there was my asthma but there's been a lot of talk um, around in, in like the asthma community about um, whether some people with asthma are going to be getting the jab in group six um, basically like the um, guidance that has come out to say who should be getting it says that in groups if you're in group six it's for people with asthma like i think it's a severe asthma who um rely on like regular steroids and um they mean by that they mean oral steroids which kind of doesn't make sense because for people who have asthma that, that that's that severe they would generally be in group four which is the extremely vulnerable group so they would have already had their jab so I know Ask Me UK have been um, following it up to try and find out because it seems like it's a mistake but um, yeah people in the asthma community have obviously been quite anxious about it um, thinking that they perhaps won't be getting priority to get the jab um, but yeah so that, I think I was just I was just shocked I kind of thought I would have to fight for it so yeah that's good um, so I need to go on to that text and work out how I go about booking my jab um, I don't know why but I feel really nervous about it I think um, just I think I'm a bit nervous just about like the side effects of the jab um, when you're chronically ill anyway y you are nervous about anything that could possibly kind of tip the boat like you know what do you call it like rock the boat and um, make you feel worse than you already do and also because of my mast cell activation syndrome um, there have been like some concerns around allergies and things like that so obviously I need to talk to them about that and what they think is best for me to do. I know people that have got mast cell activation syndrome who've had the jab um, but quite a few of them have been told to go for the Oxford one rather than the Pfizer one because of their allergies and um, just stuff that's come out about the different jabs and stuff so um yeah I'll need to kind of talk to them about that and find out what they think is best for me um but yeah no, I'm like obviously I'm I'm happy that I'm going to be getting it and um yeah I'm kind of hoping that it will just help me to feel a little bit less anxious I mean I know they're kind of saying you know when you get the jab um don't change anything that you do so I, I won't be doing that because they don't know at the moment I mean I think you've got to have two jabs anyway before you've got like the full protection and even then they're saying 
just to not change anything for the moment until you know more results come out and research and all that kind of stuff so life won't change you know on a a day-to-day -day basis but I'm just hoping that it will just make me feel you know that I have got a little bit of protection um if I were to get it and it's just another hopefully another step towards going back to some sort of normality I think and yeah I don't know I just felt a little bit emotional and just strange about it when I got the text message um so yeah I will keep you updated on that um so yeah I'm trying to get a bit of editing done I'm not getting very far unfortunately um but I did say that I would show you some Disney pins that I got last week I think and I just have not got around to doing it so I thought I'd show you them now um I do like this actually it's probably the easiest thing um so basically I got given some money from a few people for Christmas very kindly a few relatives sent money and said you know buy something that you want to buy so I decided to spend it on pins which you know some people might not agree with they might think it is a waste of the money but pins make me happy um, and Disney makes me happy and so that's what I decided to use that money on so I have got quite a few um, if I hadn't got that money for Christmas I probably wouldn't have gone quite so mad um, but yeah I don't know I'm just sitting here trying to justify myself and I know I don't need to but I'm just trying to explain why I kind of have got quite a few this time um, so yeah, quite a lot of these all came out together, which kind of worked out quite well because I was I kind of wanted to well I was trying to decide what to use the money for, um, and then when all of these pins came out, I was just like, do you know what? I'm just going to use it for them. So that's what we did. So we have a few things to show you here. So the first one is this pin, which is the Disney Store Key and Lock pin, um, which looks like this. It's like the um, kind of like the one where if you go to a Disney store and you're the first one there, you open the lock with the key, which I've never been able to do because we don't have a Disney store nearby that does it. Um, but I saw the pin and I just thought that that was really nice. I don't know how much it was, but if any of these are still available, I will pop them in the link below so that you can check them out. Uh, next up, I went for the Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree 55th Anniversary Key Pin. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. So it's a pin of the key that was released, um, which is really sweet. I'm really loving these ones, actually, the pins of the keys. Um, although they have ended up getting me into collecting the keys as well as the pins, which <laughs> wasn't what I planned, but there we go. This one was £10. So I've got that one. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, so the next one is an up one. It's actually three separate pins. Um, I absolutely love up, one of my favorite films. Um, and when I saw this, I was like, yep, I love it. Um, so yeah, you've got Carl and Ellie and then a little table with um, a jar on it that says Paradise Falls. And I think Carl's arm actually moves not that I have tried to get it out or anything yet, um, but I just thought it was quite sweet. Stuff like this, I don't know what to do, like whether to keep it on the backing because, you know, it's kind of got this nice illustration on the backing and if so, how to display it um, or whether to take it off the backing. But yeah, I just thought that that was quite nice. That one was £12. Um, there was then this one which is Tangled which is another one of my favourite films um, I, this is just one of my favourite scenes so again I'm not sure whether I'll keep it on the backing because I just love this, I just love the lantern scene but yeah you've got them in the boat um, together and then you've got Pascal up here holding on to one of the lanterns which I thought was really lovely um, and then that one was £12 as well uh, we've then got this one which I just thought was adorable so it is Forky on I think this is Bonnie's backpack and then his arms actually both move as well like that 
Um, I need to show this one to Noah actually because he loves Toy Story so I'd be interested to see what he thinks of that one. That's another one which I kind of feel like I need to keep on the backing as well um, and that one was £9. Uh, we're getting there. <laughs> I've then got this one which is one of the Legacy Collection um, ones and it is for the 60th anniversary of 101 Dalmatians. This one's got a nice bit of glitter on it which I do love. Um, quite a few people I saw on the comments on the Shop Disney like when they posted this were asking why the dogs have got like half black um, and then like obviously they've got like black here and here a lot of people thought it was like a defect on the pin um, but actually it's just from when the dogs cover themselves in soot so that people can't tell that they're Dalmatians um, and I just thought that, that was really nice that one with the glitter um, that one was also £12 and then the last pin is another Legacy Collection one and it's for the Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree 55th anniversary um, and it looks like this I love Winnie the Pooh it's just I've, well I've loved Winnie the Pooh since I was a child and I just thought this was a lovely pin as well and that one was £12 as well and then I think I've actually showed you the key already from when my mum um, bought my hoodie um, but I did actually end up getting another one of the keys as well um, so I currently have two of these so I want to see if I can try and maybe swap it with somebody else for a key that I don't have um, yeah I'll see have a think about that one but that's actually one of my favorite keys as well I thought it was really nice so yes that was my little pin splurge um, so now I can write my thank you letters to people and say what I actually use their money for um, and yeah just very very grateful that I've got relatives that still want to send me a bit of money at Christmas so yeah I do love my I do love my pins um, I just need to sort out my pin board and getting them all up there and stuff um, but I'm just not quite sure what to do with ones on backing so if anyone keeps ones on backing and how you display them do let me know because I'd be really interested anyway I need to go and get some lunch because I'm hungry um, so I will talk to you later, I haven't got any other plans for today, so it's just hopefully going to be a quiet one. Good evening, I haven't filmed anything today, um, not kind of deliberately, just, kind of, I don't know, just been trying to get on with bits and bobs and haven't really picked up the camera, um, not that it's been a very interesting day, um, it's just been a typical Sunday, getting my medication sorted for the week ahead, um, having lunch and then I've been doing some more editing because I am desperately trying to finish this um, second part of my 2020 review because I'm just done with it now. <laughs> um, I'm so close, um, I just, I'm so I've, well I'm on Christmas week so I've only got like two weeks left to look through so I'm hoping by tomorrow I can get it finished but I'm gonna have to give up now because I'm just, <laughs> I'm tired. Um, it is really cold today. I've got my Winnie the Pooh um, hoodie on that my mum got me because it's nice and warm and snuggly but I'm still absolutely freezing. A lot of people have got snow. They're saying that it's like the beast from the east too. Anyone remember the beast from the east? Um, that feels like literally like ages ago doesn't it? Um, but we haven't had any snow. Um, I think it's more like the east and we're southeast, so I think we've kind of missed it. Although at the moment it's saying that it might snow tomorrow or Tuesday, but I, I'm not sure that we'll get much to be honest. Um, but it is still freezing and windy and it just doesn't sound very nice out there. So I'm quite glad that I'm <laughs> inside at least. But yeah, I just cannot warm up today. Um, so yeah, it's just been a, a fairly quiet Sunday. My um, dad and my sister have been sorting out the or what's going to be the nursery today. Um, so it was a spare room, I guess. It, it had a bed in it and um, some of my brother's stuff that he needs to take away. And it's where Noah would like go and have his naps and things like that. But they, well, my dad has now dismantled the bed um, that's going to go to my grandma's um, because she's just struggling a lot I think at the moment and so they want to, she's got like a spare room but at the moment it's more like a dining room but she doesn't really use it so they're going to turn that um, into like a, a another bedroom so that um, if she needs people to stay the night she can, you know, like if she needs more 
like round the clock care then there's going to be a, a, a room there for that so that bed's going to go over to hers um so there's now room in there to put the cot so my dad has been building that um and there's also like a changing table with drawers which they've built um so yeah it's kind of starting to take shape although like there's still some shelving that's got a load of my brother's stuff on it and we really need him to take it away but obviously at the moment we can't do that because it's locked down <laughs> so um yeah we need to sort that out at some point but it's it's slowly getting there and starting to feel a bit more real um so yeah it's felt a little bit like a furniture shop here today with like beds and cots and chests of drawers and stuff everywhere and hammering and what have you so yeah it's been it's been all go here today but i've yeah just been in here most of the day to be honest getting on with this editing i don't i usually try not to edit on a sunday but i just want to get this done um and ideally i want to try and film next week because once this is done i can then start getting some like sit down videos out so i really want to film my what I got for Christmas even though it's February I still want to get that one out um, and then I can kind of start planning content and stuff properly because this has just taken me so long that I haven't really been planning other content um, and then I need to catch up on weekly vlogs as well so yeah it's just been a, a quiet Sunday um, we've got a roast cooking but I'm now going to go downstairs and just have a little bit of a rest before dinner I think so I've just come down to have a little cuddle with Lenny and I tried to go and he grabbed my arm and he's kind of pulled it under his head and now he's purring and he's a cat that doesn't purr an awful lot but I kind of think that maybe he just wants me to stay with him and have a cuddle which is quite sweet Good evening, I was just heading up to bed and realised that I hadn't ended the vlog. Um, I also needed to update you because I mentioned that um, I'd had a text to say that I could book my Covid vaccine. Um, so I tried to book it yesterday and there weren't any appointments left or something. Um, and it said to basically keep checking every day. So I checked today, I didn't think it would have been would have been updated but I double checked anyway um, and there weren't any so I'm going to check again tomorrow morning um, I think I'll check first thing and then hopefully there might be some appointments so I might be able to book it so yes to stay tuned for the next weekly vlog to find out more about that um, but yes I am going to head up to bed now so I thought I'd just come on and say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. If you have and you'd like to see more from me, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell. That means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you're getting on at the moment, whether you're struggling a bit like I am or whether you're doing okay or whatever else. Let me know how you're getting on. Um, and if you've got any well actually let me know if you've had your vaccine as well I'd be interested to hear if you've had it which one you had how you've found it all that kind of stuff I mean I know it's very much individual and um, we all react differently to things but just be interesting to to hear who's had it so yeah leave me a comment and let me know how you're getting on also come and follow me on social media my links are in the description below but i'll put my instagram and twitter up here those are the two platforms that i'm mainly on so do come over and say hello and i will reply to comments and everything as quickly as i can as with my youtube comments i am gradually getting through them it just is health dependent but yeah i will reply at some point um so i do appreciate any comments you leave and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye.